Hello, I'm Nikon Arandapur. Welcome to Hidden Connections. Hidden Connections is trying to understand how architecture can be used to break down spaces, therefore making it possible for people to go longer distances without getting exhausted. To understand how I can achieve this, I've explored my site, which is located in, lo in the Royal Docks, a part of Newham that has seen significant divide through development and underdevelopment. My site, which is on a roundabout, is constructed mainly of brick, which makes it very monotone and also makes it very difficult for access to wheelchair and disabled communities. While visiting site, I realized there was a lack of cyclists and art, but the site was very busy but quiet, with a lot of cars and pedestrians passing by. While I researched the site and interviewed people around it, I realized that there was no community or build up of community between the residents, uh, which was a main lacking feature. Going from my first hand research, I did some second hand research to identify how far you would have to travel to be able to either purchase art supplies or be able to be inducted into an art course or uh, be able to do, actually have access to a studio. This brought me to the idea of the third space, which is the idea of putting a break between the journey that stops you from going straight from home to a place of work and putting a, an in-between space that can be a break and a place uh, to introduce new social values. Seeing how the third space breaks down the journey, I decided to focus on cycling as there would be less need for the DLR or driving cars as they would be further forms of longer commutes which would be broken down into smaller commutes. From what I gathered on site, I want to create a casual space, a space for the community to be involved in, a safe space, and a, sa a space for bikes to be used. From my findings, I have used a ceramic space and a cycling space to be able to contrast each other for the need of exercise and an art space. And the, both spaces have used ideas of private and public land uh, to contrast how each of the parties, such as the locals and the people coming from all over the space, uh, we used area. Seeing as the site is on a roundabout, I did a taxonomy to see if my proposed ideas would be able to fit on the site. My first iterations focused on flow for the cyclists, as it was important to me for them to be able to move easily into the roundabout space and for it to become less dangerous as a result of it. Therefore, I created teardrop shapes for them to be able to move into it easily. I then refined the spaces of the cycling area and put the ceramic space on top of it, creating a duality between the two spaces. I then created a physical model to understand how the spaces I've made will interact with each other and the site. For my next iteration, I focused on improving the space I had by creating a more open area in the ground floor and removing most of the uh, teardrop shapes as they had a blind spot for the cyclists as they left the space. Seeing how uncomfortable the spaces I've created were, I looked at Toyo Ito's U House which uses hidden geometry to create uncomfortable spaces that use uh, circular paths and straight lines to create connections in the doorways, the windows, and the walls. I use the same idea, but instead creating connections from the hidden uh, to the context and uh, the building itself. 
These are my hidden connections. These hidden connections created a guide for me, which I used as a spatial constraint. I used the same hidden constraints to create my first floor plan as well. As seen on the page, the spatial arrangements have become a coffee shop and a bike shop with a bike storage space on the ground floor and a ceramic studio with a further coffee shop on the balcony on the first floor. These spaces are connected by a lift and a ramp. I then modeled my ideas in Rhino to see if my ideas created plausible three-dimensional spatial arrangements. As you can see from the elevations, the hidden constraints have created a postmodern aesthetic. I then looked at what materials were on site and saw that most of the materials were brick laid in different patterns, which led me to believe I could use something else to contrast from the boring landscape. I therefore looked at limestone and cobbled stone paired with slate roofing, copper and wood such as CLT uh, and glass for the windows to best contrast the surrounding site. The combination of these materials and the spatial ideas of the hidden geometry of the building gave the theme of the building modern gothic. I then added the roof plan and the basement plan alongside improving some ideas of the ground floor not having zebra crossings and general improvements to the uh, first floor. Through this section I wanted to understand how I could create a separation between my building and the buildings on site by elevating it from the ground floor and I wanted to see how the roof would be laid out as well. I looked at the Rye apartments to see how CLT could be used to tie back heavy materials like concrete or in my case stone. I looked at the sun path on site to see where the most beneficial placements for the windows would be. For the final basement design I added a staircase for an emergency exit route. I did the same thing on the ground floor by replacing the ramp that connects the ground on the first floor with a staircase, making the space more efficient. For the first floor I dedicated most of the space to the ceramic area, making it so that most of the south side, along with the rooftop garden, were the ceramic space. Uh, this is to make sure that the rooftop garden, which has water uh, recycling, can use the water to upcycle the ceramic so that there is no waste. Uh, I also added some toilets and access from the lift to the rooftop uh, coffee shop. For the roof, I added space for the lift to be able to carry people to the area and for people to be able to hang out in that space and potentially put up ceramics on that main wall uh, on the southwest side of the building. From this section, I tried to understand the geology of the area and also I tried to find a different angle to question my spatial ideas of the building. I 3D printed a model of my building and put it in my context to see how it would fit in with my spatial ideas. With these renders, I've tried to visualize how my building can fit into the surrounding context. Through this render, I'm trying to show how my hidden connections are creating natural, dramatic views. Through this page, I'm trying to outline how I've conveyed my ideas of private and public space in my design. In this 1 to 50 section, I'm trying to convey how the different materials are working together to pull the building together. In this hand-drawn exploded axle, I've tried to show my material choices as well as my different spatial arrangements from the basement where the kiln is stored to the ground floor where the bike storage is alongside the bike shop and the coffee shop 
and the first floor where the coffee shop continues to the balcony and there's a rain collection system on the roof garden and uh, the ceramic shop lives and also on the rooftop level where there's a social environment created as well as it is connected to the ceramics space where people can create tiles to put on the walls. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it.